Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to Unnamed Memory episode 2 in which judging by the first frame of this episode and judging by what Oscar said in the previous episode uh, they are heading towards Oscar's place Oscar's palace can't really call it a castle it's it's a palace uh, where his entire royal family resides, I would assume, probably. Uh, we will probably meet some new characters and uh, stuff is going to happen. Um, in the previous episode, in the previous episode, we were introduced to our cast of characters, at least some of them, at least the most important ones, uh, as far as we can tell. Uh, we were introduced to the story, um, stuff like that. It was basically an introductory episode as just like most first episodes are um, our main characters are Oscar who has been cursed by a witch uh, his entire lineage actually has been cursed by a witch uh, to never bear an heir uh, by well it wasn't a curse that's the most interesting thing it was a blessing blessing to the child but the blessing made it so that the child cannot survive in the womb of a regular human woman. Uh, there, there might be like two or three candidates in the entire world, who, no, on the entire continent that might be able to do that. And uh, that's why Oscar came looking for the Azure Witch, Tinasha, uh, to hope that maybe she can lift that curse. Uh, as we learned though, curse cannot really be lifted. Uh, not every curse can, that is, um, unless the curse is has some sort of a uh, predicate, I wanted to say. God, programming is a brain rot. <laughs> uh, unless the curse has some sort of a condition uh, to um, uh, undoing it, right? Like, the curse can only be undone when the seventh month strikes the seventh stone and you drop your blood onto something, right? Uh, then the curse cannot be lifted, most probably. Maybe some weaker curses can be, you can like work around them, sure, but for the most part, no. Curse is a complete thing, including uh, the conditions for the curses. Uh, Disabling, turning it off. Uh, so, Tinasha offered uh, her help, of course, because Oscar is the champion of the tower. He managed to uh, scale the entirety of it, reach the Azure Witch. Uh, but Oscar thought that, hey, you, like, you would have me look for a woman maybe somewhere in the world. Could you bear my heir? Yeah, I could. And so, be my wife then. Very simple solution, really. Uh, Tinasha, of course, denied that, but they figured out a compromise of sorts uh, where Oscar will have Tinasha accompany him for a year, which will give her the time to research the curse blessing thing. So, you know, that's also a good thing. And he probably hopes to woo her for a year until the year is over and she becomes his wife. Uh, that's probably the hope here. And uh, that's where we left off. Now we are setting off towards the, the blue, coincidentally, palace uh, where Oscar and his family resides. And uh, I know, stuff is going to start happening. Chamomile and pear, if you're curious. So, I guess uh, there's nothing left but to start watching it, right? And to do that, you will need your subs, of course, to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show. And I'm gonna have to ask you for support. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon or YouTube down below or not. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you nothing and helps a lot. And with that, we can start watching episode 2 of Unnamed Memory in 3, 2, 1, go. Castle, that ain't a castle. It's not defensive. That's a palace. Yeah, that's probably not gonna work for the curse. 
blessing. Oh, it's just a generic protection spell. Gotcha. It does, actually. Give him an antidote to have on his on himself at all times, something like that maybe. I don't know. This is episode two, right? It is. Yeah, I don't know, it just kinda seemed like it would be episode three. I guess I was uh, expecting them to arrive at the palace and uh, everybody starting to question Oscar. Oh, who is she? Did you bring the witch? Yada, yada, yada. You know, the usual. But no, apparently not. Childhood friend, right? coming out and uh, say, and asking who, 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 who is she Oscar son right stuff like that M maybe we are still yet to see it we'll see Man, it's hot. 26 degrees. It was 10 degrees outside today, but yesterday it was like 20-something. So... April, am I right? Uh, but the insides haven't cooled down, alas. Is this some sort of a magical academy? Ah, of course. Could it be the witch who stole them? Probably. What about the uncles, though? Like, can they not have more heirs? It's been the entire bloodline, including branch families, that was cursed? Or just the direct um, heirs of the king? You really just grabbed her to carry books around? Oscar training? No, two brand new characters. So we have two mages, we've already met them. Now we get two swords men, swords people, sword fighters. Oh, okay. I guess she also knows swordplay. A fencing stance?
So she's a spell sword, is what you're saying. Right? She'd be a spell sword. I like spell swords. <laughs> I really like spell swords. I really like this archetype. It's my cat cleaning herself very loudly. I was wondering what's going on. Okay, so she has some sort of an autonomy. Like, she's not tied to Tinasha. But she is her own entity. Okay. Uh, did she find a potential candidate to bear Oscar's heir? She did. Yeah, fair. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so are we... We're probably going to fight it, aren't we? 100% we're fighting the demonic beast. Beast. Fair. The only heir. Send your generals. They seem capable. Okay, so is it not about a candidate? It's actually about some danger from the demonic beast? Or is she the candidate and we are going to grab her, but we also have to solve the issue first or something like that? Probably. What are you trying to do? And who even are you in the first place? Him? Fuck do you mean him? A demon lord? I don't know. A dra oh, she has a dragon. So that's the dragon from the opening, huh? It can grow. She has the Rita Repulsa beam. <laughs> yeah. Headpat her. That's going to establish authority. <laughs> I mean, he's also smart. You clearly know what you're doing, so it would be best to here to to listen to your orders right you know what's going on and he isn't really in the know oh we're getting we're getting the feed and sequel much earlier than i thought <laughs> Where are the people? Did they teleport? 
beam me up, Scotty? Yeah, there they have some teleportation circle. I mean, cool technology. I have no idea why the end point of that teleport would be on the on the walls instead of inside, but sure. Maybe you can change the target. Hmm. Okay, so since it was sealed once, I guess we can seal it again. Or, preferably, we can just destroy it once and for all. Yeah, maybe not speak about that so casually in the presence of the outsiders. Unless we're doing the magical anime whisper that only the target person can hear and people who are two meters away cannot. Is this just a mirage? Or is it actually him? Oh, I guess he is real. Less talking, more beheading. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And you're just going to allow him to escape. Yeah, that's the anti-magic sword after all. Right, the spell, protection spell that Tinasha cast. Yeah, you should have done that earlier. Before anybody got hurt. Teehee? <laughs> okay, so not Druza himself, just one of his mages. That is a healing circle. <laughs> I love the like direct comparison. Her doing the like tiny little circle struggling and Tinasha just summoning fucking <laughs> just first aid as she closes a gaping wound through his spleen. <laughs> I don't know why I like the word spleen so much. The jig is up much earlier than I expected. Yeah. Of course. That is also very much true. You can't just, you know, rush to solve every single problem. Right? Sire, the goblins are attacking a remote village. Bring me my sword. Right? Like, you can't do that.
Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. He's not as unreasonable as I thought him to be. Not yet. Not yet. Couple more expeditions. That'll do it, but not quite yet. You have like one and a half hearts out of ten necessary for the marriage event. Not gonna happen. Yeah, should have done that from the get go. There's one survivor. I'm glad you noticed. Okay, so she actually wants to uh, finish what she started. She wasn't strong enough to seal it back then, but perhaps now she will be strong enough to do that. Oh, she wasn't strong enough to kill it, so she had to resort to sealing it, but now she can just kill it. Like Freeran with the... Uh, what was his name? The, the first demon she fought with Fern. Cool? Some, some short name like that. Qual? Something like that. Qual, I think. I don't know. The red eyes. That's nice. Yeah, not gonna be that easy. Hmm? You're... Oh! Uh, okay, so she was planting mines on it. Gotcha. Nope. Regeneration. Hmm, so not just explodey mines, but uh, chains. You sure you cannot tame it? You could probably use a familiar like that. Yeah, not quick enough. Does she have superhuman regeneration? I would certainly assume so. Or maybe not quite. Hey, maybe not quite. Interesting. And that's the gem from the uh, Penderis' forehead. That gash on her, yeah, that wasn't a severe wound. Okay, I guess just some dried out blood. Hmm, okay, makes sense. Oh, uh, did her... Oh, I thought her hair maybe lost the uh, blue tinge. That's some very long hair. Has she been, like... 
suppressing the length of her hair or something magically uh, oh okay well that's cool how do you heal well you just speed up your entire body's metabolism and shit Interestingly, her nails didn't seem to grow. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Not all that much to this episode honestly but i guess it's another introductory episode right we get introduced to a bunch of new characters and stuff yeah the mages the royal guard or whatever and who are those people that's also a very good question, isn't it? We gotta remember, we only have 12 episodes with this show. Apparently. Supposedly, rather. Uh, it seems to be a... trend, Somewhat of a trend recently, I noticed. Uh, that uh, many shows are opting for a split core. Right? Sasaki Topichan... Technically, the first season ended, but it didn't really end, and the second season has already been announced. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier similarly ended without a particularly you know, bombastic ending. It was just another episode of Shangri-La, and they announced next season. So I wonder if it's going to be the same case here. Uh, why am I talking about it? Because there's so such a vast amount of characters, seemingly. I know, if... They will all appear in just 12 episodes. What's this gem? And who are you lot? What the forest dreams of? Hmm. Are we going for a uh, monster of the week kind of deal, I wonder? Let's watch it again. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Yeah, I wonder if we're going for a monster of the week kind of thing. For now, at least, right? Uh, I'm not claiming it's going to be like that the entire time, but it kind of does feel like, oh, in this episode, Tinasha had to fight the the wolf. In the next episode, uh, she's going to have to fight uh, an ant in the forest. In the next episode, we're going to be fighting a werewolf. In the next one, oh no, demonic invasion, right? Stuff like that, maybe. Uh, all the while, though, it seems like we are kind of, sort of, somewhat progressing through the main plot a little bit. Yeah, just a invulnerability spell. No biggie. Just uh, psychological and poison attacks. And that's it. Yeah, we are slowly meeting them all. Uh, we are going to see quite a few flashbacks, aren't we? we? We already got a taste of a flashback to Tinasha's memory. We're probably going to be exploring the past a little bit. Mm, nobody else who is a part of the royal bloodline. Right, all of the cousins have uh, have been disappeared probably uh by the witch who cursed oscar uh unnamed uh, memory wherefore art thou there it is uh oh scars cousins were these uh feared by the witch who 
cursed him to ensure that there are legitimately no more royal heirs, right? Um, I wonder if she maybe kidnapped them and did something with them, like... I guess it depends how how young they were. I could see the witch kidnapping, like, up to two, three-year-old kids, maybe, and raising them herself to form a, I don't know, whatever, a witch army, <laughs> something like that. I wonder. Uh, cousins were kidnapped by the witch for some purpose or maybe a uh, i don't know some sort of a magical ritual that requires the royal blood or whatever i know maybe she was trying to kidnap oscar and his father protected him, and so she had no other choice but to curse them. Something like that, maybe. Uh, 15 years ago, yeah, that perfectly coincides. We meet Sylvia and uh, Cav. Yeah, yeah, Sylvia and Cav. Uh, Cav is a mage, he's wearing mage robes. Is Sylvia a mage as well? Yeah, she is a mage. Interesting that she doesn't wear mage robes, uh, but rather is more reminiscent of a priestess. I wonder if it's about specialization. You wear black and red robes, or black and purple, or whatever color that is, uh, as a battle mage, and if you're a support mage or a healer working on the back lines, you wear white robes, maybe. Would make sense, actually. Uh, unless it's a matter of the rank. Eh. We'll see. Uh, she's not that great at this sort of magic, but she can uh, use some healing magic. And we meet two more characters. Als and uh, Meredina. They are the swords people here. And yeah, of course, she's multi-talented. Of course, Tinasha also knows how to use a sword. And as I said already, I fucking love spell swords. I don't know why. You could ask me and I would have no answer for you. But every time I play Skyrim, I play a spell sword. Fireball in the left hand, sword or mace or axe or something like that in the right hand. I played Skyrim like three times through with this exact build every time i try to go for i don't know double-handed swords or maybe uh, maybe a sword and a shield eventually it gets replaced with a flame and the sword i can't play differently i'm sorry <laughs> uh, battle mage was my favorite class in sacred and again i have to stream sacred one of these days uh when um in Arc Age, I made a build that was not really optimal, but I Arc Age had that great uh, system where you could pick like three different classes that would make your own class. And I I think I chose whoever would fight with a sword, uh, a elemental mage, I think, and. Uh, some class that does hexes, a witch or something like that. And that, that was my build in Arc Age. Not optimal whatsoever, but I could wear heavy armor, I could wield a sword, and I could cast magic. And I was a happy camper with that. So uh, I'm liking Tinasha, because she's a spell sword. I wish, she, I wish she used that sword a little bit more in the fight with the wolf, but alas. Uh, how was she? Yeah, she was very good. The pupil of a witch. Um, and uh, she is apparently entirely or almost entirely um, free from Tinasha in a way where she can like travel around and do her own thing and appear when she needs to appear instead of Tinasha just summoning her saying, bring me tea, gets the tea and just despawns her. She really seems to be a fully 
like its own entity. Something I thought you should know. Right. Of course she's going because she has to because she still has her uh, role as the Azure Witch, right? She still has to help people. Uh, she has a contract with Oscar and she lives in the palace now, yes. But it doesn't, you know, remove her usual... Um, uh, what shall I call it? Her usual... I, I, I lost the word. Obligations, I guess you could say. Uh, that's where the demonic beast was sealed away 70 years ago. And she was the one to do that, of course. And of course, Oscar wants to tag along. Uh, partly, sure, I guess, because he feels that he's responsible for these lands. Partly, probably, let's be honest here, to score some points with Tinasha. Let's be honest. Uh, that said, he really should not be doing that. Tinasha was entirely correct, saying that, yeah, you should learn to delegate, first of all. Second of all, uh, you're the last heir. If you die, then the royal bloodline is no more. If you die, and then your father dies, that's the end of it. And your country will be put in turmoil, because who's going to replace you? There's no... There's going to be a whole fucking succession war if you die. So... Fucking don't. She's entirely correct. But Oscar is of course stubborn and he feels like he has the like it's his responsibility. Valt and uh, whoever she is. I have no clue who they are or what they're plotting. We meet the dragon, we meet Sylvia was very excited about dragons. And, uh, of course, we're taking the elite horse. Yeah, oh, that's the dude from the opening with the pauldrons. Cool, I like pauldrons. Don't go against her orders. Yeah, it's probably the first good choice he made this episode. <laughs> she knows what they're dealing with. He doesn't. So, of course, Tinasha should be the one... Uh, uh, making orders here. Giving orders. Mm, and a little bit of a flashback to all the people she already met in this palace, but they are no more. Everything I know leaves me behind, still I remain. Yeah, that's like one of the very few downsides of immortality. Beam me up, Scotty to Inur. In How the fuck do you pronounce it? Inuraid? Inuraid? In in Inuraid? In I know, something like that. The fortress in in the northwest, bordering Drutza. An Erbing nation of Drutza invaded Farsas. Versus drove back the enemy with a steady army. Drutza unleashed their giant magic weapon. Oh, uh, I thought Drutza is referring to the mage, right? The enemy mage named Drutza. Uh, but no, Drutza is the um, uh, the country. And of course, the beast was, was let loose. And it started killing indiscriminately and destroying the land and everything here. Mm, and he's just a generic Drutza mage, not mage named Drutza, just a generic mage of Drutza. Gotcha. That kind of clarifies my confusion here. Jig is up much earlier, much sooner than I expected. I fully expected the fact that Tinasha is the witch and not the witch's apprentice uh, to be kept undercover for a little bit longer. What's wrong with the lighting? I mean, I know what's wrong with the lighting. It's it's daytime and... Uh... Oh, 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 shit. Those are some dark clouds. Those are some really dark clouds. It's gonna rain. It's gonna fucking storm today. 
Yeah, that that's what's wrong with the lighting. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's one of the mages that apparently took place in that former ritual as a tiny little kid, and now he's all old and stuff. And we are, of course, talking a lot. And talking, 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 instead of just beheading him. Sure, go ahead and do that. I mean, I should be ragging on the show for it. Every single fucking anime does it. It's it's the norm, right? Oh, we met the enemy that threatens the peace of the country. We should uh, we should get you know a, a cup of tea. We should summon chairs. We should sit down and talk a little bit to that mage, right? How have you been? What are your plans exactly? Oh, you can't tell me your plans. Well, that's oh that's a shame. I remember you when you were this like little tyke. Oh, you grew so much. You grew so much. So you're saying that you're trying to conquer the world, huh? Well, that's bad. I, I should probably do something to stop you, actually. I, uh, you know, you, it, it cannot be allowed for you to, like, conquer the world. So, uh, I, I, I should probably do something. I don't know. I should probably attack you, maybe, right? What, what, what do you think, honey? Sh sh should I attack this man, maybe? Right? It's, it's the norm. I should not be complaining about it, but I, I really yearn. I yearn for another season of Arifureta for this exact reason. Uh, honestly. Hajime doesn't fuck around. <laughs> oh, you, you're stopping me. You're a threat. Well, bang, bang. You're not a threat no more. <laughs> simple. Hajime is a simple man. That's why I like Arifureta so much. And I should close the window because it's fucking cold. Give me a moment. All right. And I should probably reduce the temperature of the camera yeah from 4000 kelvin to 3500 kelvin that's the change in lighting when uh, storm clouds approach apparently good to know uh, yeah and of course he withdraws and casts some spells before he does it which he probably would not have been able to cast if he was cut down and disappeared but let's not do that why would we? Why would we attack the evil man? He got away, Tehepero. Uh, this is a very nice comparison of magical power. Sylvia here. Sylvia? Sylvia. Here with her tiny little magic circle. Probably like the height of healing magic in the in the country she's probably like the healing prodigy and whatnot because otherwise why would oscar take her with them uh, meanwhile tinasha's like oh yeah healing blast oh just you know just some first aid he should be fine now <laughs> i like her i like sanpaku eyes i like her design reminds me of uh, saya from uh, dagashikashi she reminds me of saya so much she, she needs more piercings, though. Uh, attacks don't affect me. Yeah, right. Witches are objects of fear. Well, do they have to be, though? Right, that's the question. Uh, you're acting as if, yeah, sure, witches are objects of fear. No, no, don't look at me. I should be feared, not beloved. Who says that? Who, who says that you have to be an object of fear, right? Live well with people, be likable, spend time with them, and you're not going to be on an object of fear. Unless you feel like you have to be an object of fear for some godforsaken reason, which I guess is fair, but you don't have to. Uh, we'll gather forces and arm, arm ourselves. I'll go after that mage. And of course, of course, of course, Oscar wants to join in. Uh, I'm glad though that he actually uh, let's go i'm actually glad a little bit of character growth i'd say i'm very happy to see that that he's not as stubborn as i begged him to be cool 
I fully expected him to join in regardless. I fully expected uh, when Tinasha got wounded by the uh, wolf, I fully expected Oscar to just jump out of the bushes and throw himself with a sword at the wolf. I entirely and fully expected him to be the hot-headed shonen protagonist. But no, he actually can be reasonable. I think throughout this year he will grow a little bit as a ruler. He will grow into the role of a ruler of a country and Tinasha will be the one who to coach him on the subject, so to speak. And they did not manage to break the seal. That's cool. I like it. I like that there were no speeches. Tinasha did not want to talk to them anymore. No, like, no, I will stop you, villain. Seize your actions now or you shall die. No, she just jumped in with the sword and started cutting heads. Good. Should have done that from the get-go. Uh, and uh, good that you are trying to, you know, fix your past mistakes. Because I call sealing any bad thing a mistake unless it's heavily guarded or hidden whatever is hidden can be found uh, unless it's heavily guarded it's a mistake to seal something and just leave it out in the open there will be someone who believes themselves to be stronger than you who believes themselves to be able to control that evil or use that evil for revenge or use that evil to conquer the world or use that evil to brew the elixir of immortality or whatever there will always be people like that if you can defeat that evil defeat it if you cannot defeat it and you can only seal it at least guard it like i'm not saying build a fortress around it and station guards but at least leave i know a magical ward that notifies you that oh someone entered right because they had to carry all those braziers in all those tables shit like that it wasn't just a one day operation they've probably been camping around this crystal for the past month and if you had any magical words you would know that they have indeed entered so yeah a bit stupid um un unforeseen maybe on Tinasha's part but then again she was 70 years uh, younger so she's uh, both stronger now because now she can actually dis defeat this enemy and probably less experienced as well and uh, we see some decent fight yeah some some really decent effects yep uh, I Where's the smear frame? Yeah, those are some cool smear frames. Yeah, it's a decent fight. Uh, now, sure, we still get a little bit of sliding PNGs here and there, but for the most part... Right, for the most part, it's, it's actually nice. It's actually decent. Uh, it was unclear what she's doing right now with those, like, transparent spheres that she summons like what are you doing there uh but no she was summoning something on the body of the wolf something that she could explode and later also used to summon uh, chains that would bind the wolf and bring in a big spell to to defeat it yeah and that's, I'm assuming, the gem from the forehead of this wolf, probably. Uh, I wonder if the monster gems are going to be used somehow. Monster gems are useful to what? For what purpose? I don't know. Uh, perhaps it's the uh, the other two people that we met those like shady dudes well a dude and a girl by a lake right maybe they are collecting stones for some reason i know i'm not sure no severe wounds yet tinasha managed to heal herself by accelerating her growth and uh, her feet grew as well those are some very long feet <laughs> those are some very long feet very long and very, like, flat. <laughs> uh, 
uh, feet people are not going to be satisfied. Mm, I recovered by accelerating my bodily growth. That's actually a good idea, right? Accelerate your wounds, healing themselves. It's not particularly, you know, healing magic. It's still your body that does the healing. It's just an, an accelerated rate. Cool. I like it. I like this solution. And so her hair also grew. Will your appearance change back? What do you mean appearance? Did her appearance change? Besides, like, hair? I can't tell. I honestly cannot tell if her appearance changed. I've no idea. I, I've no clue if she changed any. And if he means hair, then... Hair can be cut. Oscar, hair can be cut. Have you, have you never gotten a haircut? Uh, no, it won't. Yeah, she kept her usual appearance, I guess, younger? Question mark? I don't know. Because she was suppressing her age, but now she had to unsuppress it and even accelerate it to heal herself. Cool. Uh, that also means that there is a limited amount of uh, uses she can get out of this spell, right? Because she will eventually accelerate herself to be 150 and just going to turn into a pile of dust, right? Unless she's immortally mortal and she will look like a fucking Sultan Raisin and uh, still be alive. Maybe. Mm, you saved us indeed. I'm a witch after all. Yeah, she, uh, she has an obligation to the world to save it or something like that, probably. We will probably learn more about her motivations in the future. And there's those two people. And a crystal that has two colors. Sure. That would imply the crystal being corrupted by purple? Maybe. maybe. Uh, monster... Crystal corruption with purple. Could and now the clouds are no more, and I have motherfucker. Um, what was I? What? What is this color? What's going on? What's going on with my camera, man? What's going on with their lighting, rather? Uh, right. Uh, Monster Crystal Corruption with Purple. Uh, could this be the overarching plot of this particular season? The uh, the Monster Crystal arc, or whatever you want to call it, right? And the great grand finale will be defeating those two... Th those two kids here. Like, people. Those two people here, maybe. Because they want to collect Monster Crystals and corrupt them with Purple to summon grimace or something i don't know uh next episode what the forest dreams of uh, that kind of tells me that we might be still in the episodic part of the series where every week we get a new issue that tinasha has to solve or oscar has to solve or both of them have to solve and from episode six ish onwards we're gonna get uh we're gonna start start taking care of the story proper. Maybe. You know what? Fuck it. Auto exposure. Yeah, ju ju just do auto exposure. The screen's gonna change brightness, but I'm not gonna have to do it manually at least. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, that was episode two of Unnamed Memory. It was. It was fine. It was fine. The, the fight was fine. A little bit of character growth to Oscar was fine. It's not, like, mind-blowing. For sure it's not. But it's... It's good. I enjoyed myself. What else is there to say? Uh, if anything, it maybe kind of 
felt like we are rushing a little bit. I'm not entirely sure about the pacing. Um, I was hoping for an episode or half an episode of Tinasha just arriving and being welcomed here, stuff like that. Uh, meeting the people, meeting the king, stuff like that. But uh, instead we got, in a single episode, we got covered the, like, Tinasha is a part of the crew now, and Tinasha fights a beast. And I guess it just kind of felt fast, like we didn't really have much time to grow into that. I don't know how else to say it, honestly. It's not particularly jarring, it's not particularly grating, just, uh, just noticeable enough. Just noticeable enough to notice that we might be speeding through it a little bit. I wonder if it continues, or uh, do they just want to go through the boring parts of people talking quickly and get into the meat and potatoes of the story, or uh, what's the goal here? We'll see, I guess. But yeah, very fast character growth for Oscar. Um, very quick introduction of, oh, there is that country that was trying to conquer our country, and there is this evil sealed beast, and we have to defeat it, and you have one hour to get people, and we just go there, teleport there, and it's done, solved. Problem done. I know. Uh, other than that, though, I did enjoy this episode. I'm going to be looking forward to more, and uh, we'll see where it goes, right? Uh, but right now, I guess that's going to be it from me for today. But maybe you guys have something more to add on the topic of this episode, of my reaction, my theories, stuff like that. Say so in the comments down below. And like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to be notified of future videos, and not only unnamed uh, memory, but also others like uh, Yuki Unaisa Hero, Spice and Wolf, Sentai, Daishkaku, Blue Archive, Kaito Otome and plenty others coming in the future. Click the bell to be notified when I go live because I do sometimes. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon or YouTube down below on Patreon. For 10 bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows and for just a dollar you get a roll on the Discord and the place in credits. You can also support me on YouTube via membership, super thanks, super chats. And if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you don't have to. Share my content, spread the word, it costs absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, we we'll follow that out of the way, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, you guys, do all the good stuff, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's my one through Patreons, QB, Without a Net, Eclipse, Viber, Watson, Zarene, Yuki, Ala, Ishtamu, Dr. Watt, Akamazar, Marsh, Fassel, and Hans, Peter. And you can join them as well without having to seal any wolves. <laughs>